Hello and welcome to our next lecture which is going to be on the topic of effective bankroll management. So first off, let's go ahead and define what a bankroll is. A bankroll is nothing more than the amount of money you have set aside to purely play poker. So for example, it's not the money sitting in your bank account, it's the actual portion of that money that you have set aside to solely play poker, not to use for anything else. So for example, in online poker, this would be the amount of money that you deposit online. Um, conversely, if you play live poker, this is the amount of money you have set aside in regards to the number of buy-ins that you have, so you can play poker based upon variance and upswings and downswings. Um, so what is bankroll management? Well, it's really just the methods and the ways in which a poker player manages his or her bankroll. So it's nothing more than that. Um, and when we're talking about bankroll management, it's really a combination of using our bankroll size to determine what stakes we can afford to play at at the same time while minimizing our risk of going bust. And so that's an important concept. The important concept is that we want to understand what stakes our bankroll allows us to play while at the same time minimizing our risk of losing the entire bankroll and having to start all over from zero or having to move down to lower stakes. So let's talk about the importance of bankroll management. Why is effective bankroll management important? Well, like I said previously, you know, we don't want to go bust, but by having proper bankroll management, it allows us to withstand variance downswings. Um, and remember, variance is really the main factor that leads to uh, players uh, losing a lot of money when they're running cold. Um, variance can lead to tilt again, which causes us to play bad. And again, we spew off chips that way. So when we really think about variance downswings, right, we can think about losing several buy-ins. And so if we have effective bankroll management, we kind of can minimize the effects of variance. And so it's not going to harm us in the bigger picture. And while, you know, in the short term, yeah, it does hurt. But if we have an effective bankroll, um, the variance is going is not going to hurt as much. And without having proper bankroll management and without having the appropriate bankroll size, we really do run the risk of losing our entire bankroll. And if you talk to numerous poker players, whether they be your friends, your acquaintances, or online, you can ask lots of them and lots of people have gone bust. And it doesn't really matter what stake you're at. Some of the top poker players, they don't know how to properly utilize bankroll management or they haven't in the past. And I'm sure that many of them will tell you if you ask them if they are your friends, they can tell you stories about when they've gone bust or where they'd have to drop down to very low levels and move their way back up. So it's fairly common. So let's talk about bankroll size. Well, there really is no set rule on the size of your bankroll, and it's going to be different based upon what your goals are and in regards to how much money that you have available on the side to replenish your bankroll. But when we're talking about online cash players, um, it doesn't really matter what stakes you're playing, but let's just assume you're a recreational online poker player and you are four tabling like me, well, the recommended bankroll size would be anywhere from 20 to 40 buy-ins at your current stake. So for example, if you're playing $5 buy-in games, at a minimum, we would recommend a $100 bankroll um, up to, at a maximum, which would be sufficient, would be a $200 bankroll. And then conversely, um, if you're playing live because you're only one tabling, you can really um, reduce the, the requirements of your bankroll. So I would say, for example, if you're playing live, you could probably get away with around a 10 buy-in um, bankroll because you're only playing one table at a time. Now, if you're a tournament player, we do require larger bankrolls, and it's usually recommended to be around 100 buy-ins. And the reason for that is because in regards to variance, um, it's much higher in tournaments because what will happen with the tournament player is they can go weeks or months at a time without having a major cash in a tournament. And if you're a player that plays a lot of tournaments, um, that could be several buy-ins, you know, much higher than 20 or 30 buy-ins and so what will happen is that they'll go on the, these higher variance swings and then they'll just shoot for that big payout where they're winning lots of money um, in regards to comparatively to the buy-in so if you are a tournament player um, I would recommend a, around 100 buy-ins if you are starting at the micro stakes online um, one tabling two tabling three tabling or four tabling I would say at a minimum 20 buy-ins would be fine 
Now, if you are a professional, um, even professional cash players are recommending around 100 buy-ins because they're playing much more than four tables. They're playing six plus tables. Most of them are probably playing anywhere from eight to 12. Um, but if you're a professional, you really just don't need to be here in this class. But I just wanted to give you some insight into what professionals rely on. And then also there's the concept that if you can afford to redeposit, then you don't have to have a larger bankroll online. So, um, and, and I'll talk about this further in the lecture, but I, I actually don't recommend having a large bankroll online if you can afford to redeposit as well. So let's go ahead and just go over a, a quick table that shows for no limit hold'em bankroll size recommendations. And this is just a basic table. Um, based upon you could just look at what buy-in you think you want to start playing and then we can look at okay well what's the bankroll requirement so for example if you want to start playing 10 and L then you should have anywhere from 200 to 400 if you want to start playing 25 and L which would be the $25 buy-in games you need to have anywhere between 500 and 1000 and then if you want to start at the lowest level available online which would be the $2 buy-in games you would need anywhere from 40 and 80 dollars So let's talk about the concept of taking shots. Um, so what is taking shots? Taking shots is when you feel you're ready to move up from one stake to the next. So for example, you feel you're ready to move up from $5 games to $10 games or $10 games to $25 games. Um, so there's some basic rules on this when you feel you're ready to take these shots. And the basic rules when it comes to bankroll management is that once you reach 20 buy-ins at the next level, you're ready to take a shot and move on up. Um, and then if you go on a variance downswing, then it's recommended that you drop back down. So for example, um, if you go on a variance downswing and you drop below your initial $20, um, sorry not 20, but your 20 buy-in bankroll, then you move down a level. And I have an example here. So for example, Let's say you start with a $100 buy-in bankroll for 5 and L, so that gives you 20 buy-ins. You build that up to $200, which gives you um, 40 buy-ins at 5 and L, and at 10 and L, that gives you 20 buy-ins. So at this point, you're ready to start playing 10 and L because you have 20 buy-ins at 10 and L. However, if you start playing 10 and L and you start going on a variance downswing, then it's recommended that you drop back down. and um, what I recommend is that let's say you start at those 20 buy-ins. If you go on a five buy-in downswing, if you get down to 15 buy-ins at at 10 and L, I recommend you drop back down because you need to have some sort of leeway there. Um, you can't expect to automatically just win your first session. You may have some sessions where you lose a buy-in or a half a buy-in, and you just shouldn't automatically drop back down. But if you started that 20 buy-in. Um, level and over a period of two weeks you're down five buy-ins. I recommend you drop back down to five and L, build your bankroll back up to the 20 buy-ins and take another shot. Um, this is something that a lot of players struggle with. They will move up in a level and then they won't want to move back down and what will happen is they'll play beyond the means of their bankroll and they'll get down to 10 buy-ins, seven buy-ins or even five buy-ins at that level and at that point they'll just say screw it and they'll end up going broke so you really have to understand the concepts of taking shots and knowing when to move up and knowing when to move down based upon what your bankroll can withstand so let's go over what I like to call the basic tenets of bankroll management so what are they well there's three different ones First one is never play outside your financial means. Second one is to focus on your goals. And the third one is to play stakes your bankroll can withstand. Um, we're not talking about scale levels, we're just purely focused on bankroll management. So let's go ahead and talk about the first one, never playing outside your financial means. Um, you should never play outside your financial means, period. And I'm not just talking about your bankroll, I'm talking about your life role, so your entire savings. If you can't afford to be playing a stake, if you can't afford to be playing it based upon um, other requirements within your life, paying rent, paying utilities, and purchasing food, well, you shouldn't be doing it. Um, variance downswings are a fact of poker, and you really don't want to put yourself in a spot where you're going to bust your entire bankroll or you're going to take money out of your savings that you shouldn't have. That'll cause financial harm to you and potentially others in your life. So first of all, before you start playing poker, don't play if you can't afford it financially within your entire savings. 
The second thing is to really focus on your goals. So what I mean by really focusing on your personal goals, well you need to let your own personal goals dictate your bankroll management needs. If you're a recreational player that plays for fun and you have other sources of income, then a smaller bankroll is okay. So like myself, you know, I could get away with putting 10 buy-ins online and if I go bust I could put another 10 buy-ins online at 5 and L because it's just a small amount for me and I have other sources of income. I mean online poker really isn't my source of income at all it's just a hobby now let's take this and look at it from another perspective let's say you're a professional poker player and you rely solely on your bankroll so your bankroll is your life role your bankroll is all your savings as well um, you should definitely strictly adhere to proper bankroll management um, because the last thing you want to do is go bust because you're not only going bust on your bankroll but you're going bust on your savings as well and because poker is your sole source of income um, you don't have this side income that you can go and pull money out of so when it comes to bankroll manage just really focus on your goals and then lastly play stakes that your bankroll can withstand so I know I've talked about this before but I just want to reiterate that always play stakes that your bankroll can withstand so remember we're talking about variance downswing here and how variance can lead players to play poorly and when we play poorly we get tilted and then we spew off chips and we lose a bunch of money so it doesn't matter um, that you're gonna go on a downswing or not we just know that it will happen it's not a matter of if it's just how big it will be and we just want to have our bankroll set to a level that it can withstand those variance downswings so never play higher stakes that your bankroll um, can't withstand just play the highest stakes that your bankroll can withstand based upon our recommendations and um, remember just go back to the table provided earlier in the lecture um, and you can get an idea of what your bankroll needs to be in terms of the overall size for various stakes So lastly, I want to talk about my overall thoughts and personal thoughts on online bankrolls. So um, this is someone outside the realm of effective bankroll management. This is more so in regards to personal safety of your money um, and keeping money online on poker websites. So while it's tempting to leave your bankroll online on sites that you play, I personally don't recommend that you do so. So for example, if you're playing a hundred nil on a site such as PokerStars and let's assume that you have 70 buy-ins there so you have a fairly large sum on there I recommend that you don't keep such a large bankroll on a site like that um, and the reason is because after Black Friday with the full tilt scandal a lot of poker players really shouldn't trust or rely on poker sites to handle majority of their bankroll especially if you're a professional poker player and you don't have any other source of income. Um, for those of you that remember um, Black Friday and the Full Tilt scandal, a lot of players lost a lot of money and a lot of players are still, I believe some of them are still waiting on thousands of dollars. But essentially the money was seized and it took several years for players to get their monies back. Um, and then there's some online sites right now where um, I've heard issues where players aren't getting their their checks back to them people are requesting cash outs and it's not happening and it's been uh, 18 months or longer so it's happening now with certain sites you just really don't want to trust these sites and when you do play online make sure you do your due diligence you under understand which sites are safe to play on and which sites you shouldn't play on so this gets me to the point that let's assume that you're a professional poker player the last thing you want to do is have a majority of your net wealth stored on a poker site um, say for example you have seventy thousand dollars on a poker site and you're playing the nosebleeds and you only have three thousand dollars in your regular savings account what happens if something happens to that poker website you have no control over what's going to happen um, if you're in a different country you probably have no legal jurisdiction to get your money back so just be careful um, a lot of bad things can happen because they happen in the past and if they did in the past they'll probably happen again in the future um, and so that really gets back to you know just thinking very safely about your money so instead I really recommend keeping a per large percentage of your bankroll in your bank account and um, this is not only to protect it but it's also where your money can work for itself and what I mean by that I'm talking about accruing interest so my recommendation is to keep a minimal bankroll online 
um, as you continue to earn money online, um, withdraw that unless you're looking to move up in levels. But once you reach a level that you want to stay at, keep a minimal bankroll online and withdraw money, keep it in your savings account where you can earn interest. And then if you go on a negative variance downswing, then reload, put more money back online. I don't recommend keeping a large bankroll online. And so by doing this, you allow yourself to do things, to do two things. First of all, you allow yourself to minimize your risk exposure to a poker site going offline um, or defrauding you of your money. Secondly, you allow your money to work for itself. Now, a regular savings account really isn't going to earn, earn you much, in, much interest at all, but there are some high yield savings accounts on the end on the internet such as the American Express high yield savings account which earns you around 1% interest. Um, at the lower stakes levels it's not going to be much but as you move up in different levels um, you know a little bit of interest here and there is better than no money at all. So you know that's just kind of my two thoughts on online bankrolls and how much you should keep online and how you should try to protect your money and let your money work for itself. Again, I'm not trying to scare you away from playing online. I just want you to do your own due diligence and determine where it's safe to play online, um, what sites have good reputations and what sites don't have good reputations, and just be safe overall with your money and your bankroll because it is your money, it's your earnings, and you do want to protect it. So. That will go ahead and conclude this lecture. If you have any questions about effective bankroll manage, uh, management, of course, go ahead and reach out to me on Udemy or on the Microgrinder forums, and I'll be happy to answer your questions. Uh, thank you so much for watching this lecture. I appreciate it, and we'll see you at the next lecture. To enroll in our 100% free two-hour Poker Fundamentals course, click the link below.